Bada boom, bada bang, Dada boy show. We out here with it. Yo, today, <laughs> I have an original Toro bread in the building. You already know. Oga boss is in the house. Iligati. What What's up? What's, How going, you doing, What's man? going on? Family, yeah. family, hey. family. Oga boss. How are you, it's man? It's crazy, man. Like, I, I need to say this for people to know. Oga boss was one of the first set of people that really accepted me when I, when I, join the game you understand because you have those years that you hustle yeah. before you Absol- officially join the game absolutely you understand so Ogabos, I, I can say like maybe top three or top four people i was like yo you're one of us who i felt like an outsider he was like ah come here you're one of us you're a deep guy we like this so shout out to you sir thank you so for much everything man. that you've been thanks doing. for having me on the show though thank you yeah. so much thank you for awesome. coming it's you awesome. understand you understand nice setup Thank you. We try small. <laughs> How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. I'm great. Mentally great. Mm-hmm. Um, physically great. You know. Yeah, God, look, God, you, God you, is you great. burned down some of the calories. I see that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I lost some weight. Yep. Yeah. You've been hitting the gym? Treadmill? Re- re- yeah, it, it's some treadmill, then then just some good old, you know, run, runs. Just, mm-hmm. you know, just run up and down, up and down. They're tired of me in my neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, I am mine's always running. Forrest Gump. You know, and all stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know but I've been just, just trying to stay healthy, trying to eat a bit better. You know, because yeah. there's a lot going on with the food these yeah. days. Yeah. You know, so you've seen all kinds of pictures of where all the food we eat comes from, yeah. how they process it, how they forcefully get things to get ripe, you know. Yeah. So I'm just like, you know, let me just try my own part. So if the food is wrong one way or the mm-hmm. other, the exercising and every other thing. Which... Oh, but you're not a vegetarian though. Oh no, 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 no. Yeah. I, I like to I like meat too yeah, much. Too like... much. <laughs> <laughs> Which guys do. I still eat, man. I still eat, but just in portions. Okay. Just in portions. Okay. Yes. All right, man. Oga boss, mm. Il Bliss, shout out to you for coming through. Um, what has how what has been your survival technique during this whole lockdown COVID situation? Aside from just saving yourself from co- contacting COVID, mm-hmm. and also doing the things that you do, working, music, movies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? How has what has been your survival, survival technique? It's just been trainings. Just just getting short short form trainings. You mm-hmm. know, some in finance, um, some in in film, some in, in script writing, you know. So I, I decided I was just going to take that period between um, February when COVID broke out fully mm-hmm. um, to just, you know, put out a, a well, put, put another album together. I'm from the album era. There you go. You know, so yeah. um, put another album together, spend more time with, you know, the family, you know. Then also read, read a lot, um, um, train, get some training, watch a lot of videos on YouTube, on various platforms. Yeah, because somewhere at the back of my head, I am um, filmmaking is something I've been eyeballing for a while. Yeah, you know, just just trying to understand how the greats put together, you know, all the classic films productions, mm-hmm. and um, understanding budgets for production, understanding formats as well. Is it a podcast? Is it is it a um, serialized content of five minutes each, ten minutes each? Is it f- feature film? How do you sell it? You know, and. I've just been busy just reading, being geeky, man. I swear. Yeah, you know. Being geeky. Being geek, being geeky. While other people were panicking, I was being geeky and thankful. Yeah. Yeah, to God. Look, look, it's crazy. <laughs> You're talking about formats and doing shows and doing all the same. Toro Bread, you please didn't think about that shit. Toro Bread, you no. please just, you understand, <laughs> put a knife to your neck, slot, gun we you. Were, we were radical with Toro Bread, <laughs> man. I didn't even know. Oh, my God. Uh, it, it was just radical. We, we were... We wanted to go against the machine. Mm. So we felt th- the hip hop from Nigeria needed to sound in a certain way. Yeah. Um, we spit, spit, lyrics, um, lyrical content there you only. Go. Um, it, it wasn't like we were averse to, um, commercial music, but we, we just felt the lyricism mm. had to be up there as well. You know, so we came out at a point, I feel like we were too ahead of our time. So when we came out, it was us just trying to, um, force our style of music down the throats of Nigerians. And in Nigeria, we want what we want. We are, we are a very rhythmic country. We like, we like to dance, you know, you vibe. So, yeah. so vibes and all. So then, so it, it was always leftist. The, mm-hmm. Our music was always leftist. Plus, we didn't even have an incredible budget to push it. So, yeah. It was who, was, a, who was the biggest hip hop artist when Torebed was put together? Who in was, Niger- in Niger- Nigeria? Who was, who was the hardest artist then? 
Hip hop. I know Rugged was up there. Yeah. Rugged somewhere up there. I know Mode Nine, Nine was yeah. was up there. Um and you know this whole thoroughbred thing was even an experiment. Okay. So it was me, Obi Wan, um, my late friend B Elect, um yeah, Am- Amaka and El Lajo. Mm-hmm. So we all went to UNN. So from UNN we could hook up, you know, mm-hmm. at the basketball court or in front of the yeah, library. What's with the East and hip hop, bro? <sighs> Man. Bro, till today, the <laughs> hip hop from the East is crazy. It is. And what? to think that we were even kind of starved of the hip hop. Do you know when I was in school, when I was in UNN, I, all my friends were Lagos boys. Mm-hmm. So the, w- whenever there was a break or there was um, time, maybe just go home, refresh and come back. Yeah. Whenever they would come back, I would always ask for just a few things, just for them to help me buy clothes and for them to help me make tapes from Ray Power. Okay. That was the Cardinal station then. That was the perhaps the only station then. Yeah. You know, so they would make tapes and bring back. So then that gave me a chance to hear what was going on in Lagos on Lagos Radio. Mm-hmm. So that's how I found Paul Play Dairo, mm. The Tribesmen, mm. Rough Rugged and Raw. There you go. Um List is Endless, Jide Taiwo, Tony Tetwila. That's how I found out that <laughs> music was like there was an ecosystem that was existing. And it wasn't that way in the East because the East was predominantly high life. High life, yeah. You know, so we were growing up, we were trying to write music, but we could we performed in school extensively, mm. you know, through the universities in the Southeast. But we never really knew it was it was ever going to become anything big. But we loved hip hop. We were very influenced by the the golden era of hip hop, the, mm. the the nineties, the from early nineties right into you know later parts of the nineties. So. For me, that's how I, I say, and I say to myself, I'm coming to serve in, in Lagos. This, my parents were against it, but I said, listen, this is where I needed to be. Because Why would they be against you serving in Lagos? No, they didn't want it because, you know, Eastern parents are designed in the same way. So you grow up here. You must serve you know, it. You know, you must come here, stay under our wing, even after uni. Mm-hmm. So I just told my dad, I said, that's my result. Dad, I got the two one. You can have it. I'm gone. So I'm moving to Lagos. Say, what do you, who do you know in Lagos? I said, nobody, but I'm I'm going to camp. So when I got to Yanopaja, is that is that from a verse? No, it sounded like it's from a verse. They say I talk yeah, like yeah, they say I it? talk like the yeah, way I rap. That's sometimes. the result, Dad. I got a two one. I'm going to Lagos. Going to who Lagos. do you know in Lagos? No one. <laughs> no but I'm one. Going to camp. Yes, ah. but I'm but I'm going, I'm going to camp. Okay. And, and that's how I I came to Yanopaja on a rainy Saturday. Fresh out of a night bus from the southeast that dropped me off in Ojota. Dropped me out of Ojota. Then I found my way. You know, I tell people it's key how you come into Lagos. Mm. It's key, man. If they picked you up from the airport with a nice car and a couple friends, it's, 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 your hustle will reflect that. It's good. Yeah, if you came in through Bega, you understand? <laughs> you know when you get to Bega, you see like like a million people moving at the same time. <laughs> Coming from Enugu, which is where I grew up, where mm-hmm. I grew up mm-hmm. is a total culture shock because Enugu is very quiet. It's like yeah. Ibado, very, very tame, very chilled. So, and that's how I came here, ended up in camp, got my number 7,057. Mm. That's how many people that were in camp before me. And then I just got in, into my life in Lagos. It's crazy you remember your, your number. My four album is called Illegati 7057. That was my NYSC number. And I know because... I know how many shows I've gone back to the NYC camp to do, and yeah. it's always surreal. Every time I go back, get back there, and I'm wearing that khaki and I'm performing, you know, some of my big records. Yeah. It just feels like you came and you you yeah. found some success here yeah. in the West. That's so crazy. the East birthed us, but the West blew us. The the West taught us everything. Yeah. yeah. So, but okay, so UNN mm-hmm. being a student, yeah. obviously, yeah, hopes and dreams. Yeah. One of them was in hip hop. Or was one of them definitely hip hop? It was, it was, was it was hip hop, but I didn't even know how to navigate, to yeah, yeah, navigate, yeah. navigate okay, so, around it. Yeah. But we all had that initial dream mm. when they asked you, "Oh, what do you want to be? What do you want to be? What was it for you?" Blue? Okay, for so for me, um, I, I'm a law reject. I'm a law department reject. He's a law department yeah, reject. so but, but dad wanted, you know, he wanted a lawyer in his family, and you know how parents are just. Think they know what you what's best for you yeah so i couldn't make the cut off that year so i ended up in political science and um, international relations so i studied that and after the first year i hit the gp to move to law second year then i went to the law class and walked in and saw everybody dressed in white and black looking like keyboards like 
piano keys. He said, and I, like keyboard, and I don't I kill I was, me. And I said this wasn't the profession for me. And I went back to UNN and I finished political science and majored in international relations. Okay. Um, and it bro, even up till graduation with my certificate, I still didn't know what to do. Same here. Yeah. <laughs> I gave a whole speech about how when I was leaving university, yeah, people thought I knew what I was going to do. I had no idea. No idea. My, that was my biggest fear. Like, I was, I've never been that depressed in my life, mm-hmm. but probably like two weeks to graduation, yeah. I was so scared. Yeah. I was like, okay, the school will really worry about, we don't finish up. Yes, sir. What do we want to do now? What do we do next? Like, I was so scared. Like, yeah. I was, what, I was, what, what was I going to do? Yeah. You understand? Know like, I'm going back home, like, to Pops. I was like, oh, man. Yeah. We do all good there, Pops. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm Because he has his own doings, but he's he's very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Not knowing that, even in his mind, because he was always telling me, okay, that's finished. Take one year and chill. And chill. And ch- I was like, chill? True, true. I don't think it was. When good. I came to Lagos for service, um, when I got into camp, so it was a celebration. Mm-hmm. Well, we just graduated. Oh, people are turning up at the Mami Market, drinking their Alawi away. Then there was this girl I was I was trying to um, chase in camp. Mm. So I was always hanging out with her. Very serious-minded chick. So one every now and then, I'll see her with a GRE book. I'm like, what's that book you always keep carrying? This thick book. She's like... This is an aptitude test book. Yeah. You mean you don't know this book? You don't know what the GRE means? This is how every corporate, this is how they set their tests for you to write the test and join the organization. Um, she's She had about four jobs already. Chevron, um, two banks. So I'm like, wow, so aren't they going to post us? She's <laughs> like, man. You don't know anything. This dude, you're, you're coasting. But you know what? <laughs> Let's go to town. Let's go to town the next day. So we got on the bus and just headed out to VI the next day. You know, and then we ran through VI, dropping us my CVs here and there. That's how I became a banker. It was accidental, because a couple of the CVs they now started hollering back. Okay, like come do a test, come do an interview. Before you know it, smoke the test. Yes, I smoked the test because man, once I found the light, ah, I say man, the mami guys, my mami market gang, they stopped seeing me. <laughs> so they will see me in the evening. They'll be like, where have you been? I'll be you like, I've, I've been in town. You guys are drinking a lot though. <laughs> you, guys, you guys need to sort out the future. You know, so I got back and I, I joined um, a bank called um, Citizens Bank. Now it's called Heritage Bank. Okay. And that's where I had my youth service for the first year. That was a while ago. Oh, no, that Some was... of you oh, know it as Heritage Bank. Yeah. But Citizens <laughs> Bank, I'm just saying, that was a while that was, that ago. Was, that was way back. Yeah, yeah. Do, do your back. research. Do your yeah. research. Then I moved through a couple other banks from there, mm-hmm. you know, and then moved, stayed a year there for service, moved after the eight months, moved to another bank. I, I moved through three banks. And then left banking as an assistant manager. Mm. Banking taught me everything. Every single thing, bro. Risk management, lending, treasury, customer retention. Ah, bro. Mm. Every single thing. Which is why, even as a banker, I was rapping, but I was in the closet. Because I couldn't come out. It was it was a taboo to come out and say, I'm a banker. You're managing a the Oando account, for instance, and you rap. Rap. Like, it was, it was in the no-go area. You understand and but i wasn't in the real world it's okay no it's beautiful it's it's just that then it was just so cliched mm-hmm. the banker was just you know that guy in the nice starched white shirt and the tie you know and the nice shoes yeah and the suits yeah you know my bosses knew me they said one of my bosses asked me one day said we know we tell you guys to dress down on fridays but why do you wear these construction boots to work <laughs> teams i'm like that teams that new york teams <laughs> Like <laughs> he said, construction. Boots. He said, but they look like don't they look too heavy for you? I'm like, no. Nah. <laughs> he said, why are your clothes so big? Like I said, because life. I don't want to dress like you. Rap life. Yeah, it was rap life rap De- life. dealing with me in a in a bank in an ecosystem that was financial. But yeah, it was just it was. It's funny because when I remember it now, when some of those dudes call me back now, mm-hmm. some of them are like, we always come be. on. Some of them are like DMDs. Some of them are like EDs and banks. They're like, man. To be, we just saw your video. We're so proud of you. We're still yeah. stuck here. I'm like, please don't be doing that stuck here. Your salary is insane. <laughs> I'm always seeing you and your family touring. And <laughs> you don't know what I go through in the entertainment space. You know, so that that's that's that was my journey through through um and service. It, and, yeah. and and it is a two different ball games. Oh yes. The banking sector yeah. and the music game. Yeah. Do you understand? Even those the same have the, because it's both now hustle. 
Oh, they yes. see some of them. They see have the same rules and regulations. Same rules. You it's understand? a balance. It's a balance sheet. That's okay. the way I look at music. So the same way, um, they'll tell you, okay, Toby, what's your balance sheet? How many demand deposits? Demand deposits are, are like savings, current, like how much, how much. Um, they call it liability generation. Like when you you have mm-hmm. fixed deposits, current account balances. Yeah. How much? What is your cabal? Your current account balance. Mm-hmm. What is it? Then how many risk assets have you been able to create, which are loans, okay. essentially? How much are you making off loans? Mm. Work out every kind of loan. Term loans, leases, overdrafts, you name it, man. Ba- all kinds, BAs, all kinds of stuff. So I always used to look at music from that perspective. Mm. Like this is a balance sheet. How much did you shoot X, X and X videos with? How much tours did you do? Yep. Um, how many concerts did you do? Any endorsements? How much you put into promo? How, how much, much promo? So because how much you put into cutting the record, cutting the record, pr- paying the producers, Doing you know. So it, it was always that it, at the back of my mind, I always said to myself, okay, so if you put in this much, how come you're not getting out? It's an in and out. Yeah. So you see that you, this is the uh, these are the debits and these are the credits. Yeah. So that's how I always looked at, at music, which is where the entire Oga boss came personality came from because i i liked the finance i liked the technicalities and rules of fine of the finance world but i wasn't a financial guy from the heart mm. it was a job that i didn't like i hated the pressure you know but i like what it taught me i like all the things that it taught me and how okay but you, you yeah. don't like wala like this you they do bank nine to five they go bro i was doing you. nine to eleven bro PM. they go don't they stress you bro it was crazy oh i, I had bosses that would be like Every Monday morning, you know, once it's Sunday, you get depressed. <laughs> because Monday morning, but you gotta go to work. Monday was war. Monday Damn. is, is you're sitting down there and your boss is looking through everybody's. So let's see your weekly activity report. What is this? Do you think this is how I made senior manager in a couple years? What are you doing, Tobey? Why, why is this bank paying you? I'm sending everybody to human resources. I need another team. You know, so, and sometimes you look at it, then I just snapped one day. After so much bashing, after so <laughs> much harassment, I just said, Ijoma, but Ijoma, why do you keep talking to us like this? Like, you know, you don't you didn't give us any money to keep now. You know, by then my head was full. The mm-hmm. whole team, head low, as always, mm-hmm. sulking, full me. One of my teammates had already burst into tears. Oh. And the woman was like, get out of my office. I don't want to see your fake tears. I'm like, why do you speak to her that way? She's somebody's wife. There you go. Is this how they treated you and you made SM in a couple of years? Man, keep this. I cursed, so I can't say it on your podcast. Please, you can. We're going online. Keep this fucking job. Man. Please do. Please, my cost as was, much as you want. My boss was shook as hell. She just, I just got up, went to my table. You know when your head is full, mm-hmm. you just go pack out your table, pack your documents, put it in a rucksack, and, and stepped away. That's how I left banking. It's just one morning. My head just, it just snapped. I just said, no, Ili, there has to be another way. This is not it. You that's know, how you left. That's how I left. It was a talk back situation. Say, come back here. Come back here. Human resources don't... I'm gone. Then they start to call you to be, we know there's a lot of pressure. We're a new bank. We need you to come in. I'm like, come in and do what? Now I'm done. I'm done. I'll send you my letter. So I, I, then I, I then started... A, a couple of weeks later, as fate will have it, that same bank collapsed under CBN guidelines and... Um, and I lost a lot of money in that bank because I was keeping money, s- savings, and buying the bank shares and blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Then I tried to get another bank job. And I found out that I was assistant manager, but all the other banks were offering me banking officer, assistant banking officer, which is like three steps below because they knew I was coming from a distressed bank mm-hmm. with a lot of experience. So they were getting me for cheap. I turned to my babe, my girlfriend, then now my wife, and just said, babe, I can't seem to break out of this sector. I've just been working in different different banks. I don't. Mm-hmm. My CV is all financial. It's just in one direction. Let me go to Jan and chill for a bit. So I took my visa. I went to Jan to chill for two, three months. Two, three months became three years. Yeah, that's another chapter of the chapel book that we'll, <laughs> that we'll discuss. <laughs> you were in London day. for three years? Yes, I was in London for three years. How come you never told anybody this? Bro, I was living in London. London was dark. Damn. London was some of the darkest moments in my life. Like, and they have a really dark weather. Too, bro, so. they have a dark grey weather. Dark, like gray. sad, and they're just not gloomy. They're just not upbeat. There wasn't <laughs> anything so... upbeat about it. Bro, England, England shaped me a lot. Damn. Yeah, I did everything, oh, bro. K, um, KFC, 
in central London. I was there. I was, I was frying the chips. No way. It yes, was... hold up now. No way. The I've ne- never heard of the this. Nestle, never you heard can this. hear it because it's exclusive for your podcast. Show. The Nestle Coffee Factory in Hayes and Hallington. I was pushing the forklifts. I was driving. To, to I was pushing them. the forklifts to pick up the, the coffee beans. Yeah, the heavy beans. Yes, the heavy beans and place them. That's the biggest nest. Probably the second biggest nest after the one in York. Um, Hayes and Hallington, very close to Heathrow. So I got in there. I was doing industrial cleaning, wearing the blue overalls. I'm, yeah, still, with the I'm still writing my lyrics. I'm the rubber boots. I'm still writing my lyrics every chance I got. And, you know, oh. it, it was, it, bro, like when I, I, I'm going to do my memoir at some point in my life. It's not time yet. Yeah. But, but when I do it, people will be amazed to read it and understand what the word tenacity means. Mm. Tenacity is when you drop from an, an assistant banking officer in a, in a good bank and you just fall so low you fall in england there was a point i was homeless there's a point i had nowhere to stay i was just today i'll squat in stratford in a friend's house tomorrow i'll squat there you know and my mom said come home mm. we're not fighting a war in nigeria come home i'm like mom no let me chill my girlfriend stayed stayed fast for three years waited for me to get i came back i came back to marry her so she's my wife yeah, yeah with beautiful so, kids. Yeah, thank you very much. With beautiful kids. It was kids. it was crazy, bro. England taught me like that was a, that was another side to my life. Like it made me understand have a lot of value for money. When they say you're working for nine pounds an hour, ten pounds an hour, it made me understand that for you to buy those new S dot Kata sneakers or those new G unit sneakers, you needed to save and save. Then you had your rent to pay. Then you had studio sessions. I was doing sessions. And as all of this was happening, the Nigerian music space was changing. Yep. Every time I would go to the internet, I'll see Obi Asika launches Storm Records. Mm. Kenny Ogumwe signs, blah, 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 blah. So a lot was going on. The first Big Brother happened. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then the Notting Hill Carnival um, at one of the Notting Hill Carnivals, I met Obi Asika and he said, why don't you just come home? You know, your guys' thoroughbreds are an amazing group and I put them on. I've given them opportunities. Why don't you come home? It's nothing here for you. Music is changing in Nigeria. Come home and yeah, do it. come home. But I, I stayed about, I said, yeah, three years pretty mm. much in England. Grinding. That's how I became an Arsenal fan. Over the weekends, I was a tunnel guard at Tybury. No way. Us. I'll give you pictures that you slumped. Oh see. my Bro, god. With all of the greats. You know the tunnel guards with the green jackets? Yes, yes, that was, yes. That yes, was yes. me for over a year. Telling people pass here, yes. please, pass here, take care, take pass here. Pass That's that's what it was. Jeez. So they think Ili Chapo fell from the sky. They don't understand. Like I have war, I have stripes. I have war scars all over my body. Jeez. You understand? So in all of that, I kept writing. I kept writing the music. I kept trying to perfect with my... hybrid like Dennis Beckham oh yes Robert From Perez Beckham to Henry. Freddie Lomberg to Thierry to oh my god you name it like f- I was standing in front of Ashley Cole's crib in North London when he wanted to move to Chelsea with a banner written Ashley Cole oh when when yeah, we he were did all mad at yeah, him yeah, for yeah. doing that Chelsea move I have pictures I'll send them to you so you put them on this podcast yeah be, I'm like I've seen, I've been a real gunner. We were, I moved with the security outfit yeah. to the Emirates. Damn. Yes, we saw the Emirates being built. We've done community service. We've cleaned the locker rooms. That's why when I threw, I don't throw tantrums about Arsenal anymore because <laughs> You're tired. I, I grew up. No, I grew up. <laughs> I, just, grew up. I just grew up. I, I, I'm in various Arsenal groups and I'm, people are losing sleep and people are hi- hypertensive over our state where we are in the league so i just kind of agree it because i just understood that it's, it's going to take a while for right. these things to be sorted so i did all of that i had cleaning jobs i was cleaning two schools yeah. middle middle high school in oxbridge and then some of the school in you know so and doing, i was doing all of this you know doing, why i was doing all of this why because i didn't have one job okay so i was a hustler so i was working with papers that weren't mine so i was you know three hours here, four hours here, you know, just to keep it together because I didn't have that one block dope job with a lot of money. So I was doing a lot of jobs. The caretaker to the crib I was living, every time I paid her, she's a South African woman, she'd be like, Toby, you're, you're never here. Where you are always working. You're I said, always working. I said, <laughs> I said, Tembi, if I don't work, you'd kick me out. Yeah. You can't do your mortgage if, if I don't work. 
you know. So I had this studio in um, Wood Green, East London. There you go. And this engineer called um, Ian Carter. So Ian was Irish. So Ian was recording me. So I'll come and pay him like a hundred pounds. He'll give me four hours to record. I made a whole album in four hours. I made like a nine, ten track album in four hours. I was spitting verses, putting the choruses, rapping over beats, telling him just mix it this way. And and the guy just told me, yo, yo, Toby, just chill. I'll give you like six more hours. Just chill though. You Nigerians are crazy. He said this is how every Nigerian artist works. Like every time we come in, we want to record and record and record and we have it all put together. Mm -hmm. You understand? So that also taught me how to be dependent on self. Damn. Taught me how to move myself. Bruv, every single thing. After doing all this, the hustle. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like this is this is crazy. I've never heard this before. <laughs> this part of your place. Yes. So after doing all this, how did you psych yourself to actually say, you know what? I'm going back and I'm gonna kick in the music doors. Because it, it takes a whole different kind of mental state. No, it does. To uh, come back to go from bruv. this bank oh, wow. to flipping burgers bruv. and coming back and owning the game. Bruv, I came back came back to Nigeria and my friend said you're crazy stay in England I'm like no I'm back here there's money here so I came back here and um, I started my life all over again mm. first I ran out of money after a while you know then my missus had a job at Storm Records yes the Neto C, the, the early Neto C Kichuku yeah. era yeah. yes you know shout out to Kills he's getting married this weekend by yes, the way yes, yes. sir <laughs> so um <laughs> And then my wife was working. I, I, I can't even tell you her salary was so meager. She cut it into two and give me one part. Damn. I just said, you just have this and just be all right. Just keep looking. I kept looking for work, but I didn't want to go back to banking and finance. You understand? Up until I got a job in um, Planet One. Maryland? Yeah, Maryland. I was the events manager in Planet One for a year. So while working in Planet One, um, I ran into some lady that introduced me to another company called Ultima Studios. I know Ultima Studios. Which is where I, the producers of Millionaire and um, Project Fame. Yeah. So I went there as a production manager and that's where I learned television. Mm -hmm. In between some of that, I, I met my good friend Clarence Peters. Yeah. And yeah. we got into a partnership, you know, the Goretti Capital Goretti, Partnership, yeah. you know, and, and we just started to build up. We didn't even know what we were doing, man. Bro, we, we just knew we were expressing ourselves. I met Clarence on the set for Styley. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. And I was asking, who's that dude painting the wall? Mm -hmm. He was painting and calibrating the camera. They said, oh, that's that clown's guy, man. He's going to be big someday. He's mm. interning or working with DJT. Yeah. yeah. And that's how we met up and started, the, you know, the capital movement, the Goretti movement. It, it, bro, man, there's so many pages to this story. Is there anything you can do? Because you can <laughs> definitely fix a balance sheet. You can definitely make a mean ass burger from KFC. <laughs> You can drive a truck. <laughs> well, uh, bro, bro, you bro, can drive I a did truck. A, I did everything. Bro, no, fuck lifts. Not, fuck not the, sorry, yeah, fuck lifts. Fuck lift. and, I, and I learned it on the spot. Do you know how difficult it is to drive a fuck lift? Oh, yes. Dang, like, oh, yes, I do. Do you know how, oh, yes, bro, my... Bro, while living in England, um, you, you see, you have no time because I was always walking. So always, I was always reading because you're always in a train. Mm hmm so it's either you, you have a book or you have your Kindle and you're just reading or listening to music. So I just, I learned so much, so much stuff that I, I'm practicing today, but you know, in that era, in that mm, period, mm. that was, that was a very form formative time for me. Okay. Very reflective as well, you know? So when I came back to Nigeria, I started all over again, you know, by the time I, I was always walking, mm. you know, so while making the music, even while I put out my first records, Okwa, Okwa, Da, Igbo Boy, yeah. Chichi Chilling in the club, Right up to Ayat Bogor in 2008. Eight. I was all walking. I was I was walking. I had a day job. Because I was so scared. I oh. couldn't be able to meet up meet up with my obligations if, if just from music. Just from rap music. Mm. Because I wasn't even making the most commercial variant of rap. That's true. Yeah. We were proper lyricists that yeah. we were. Our beats weren't exactly so radio friendly at, some, at that point. You know, so... It's a different day today when I look around. You and go I, undo, Oh my God. You go undo, You go undo. <laughs> Say why you go undo. Say why hey, you go undo. That was Kel and Suspect. Featuring Kel and Suspect. Yeah. That was the first song we made as a Capital Goretti Alliance. So my company is called the Goretti Company. Yeah. My wife's name is Maria Goretti. 
because we're Catholics. So that's where I got the name from. Yes. So um, then Clarence was capital. You know, so he, he told me he had two artists, Kel and Suspect. So and you guys went in the I studio. I put them in the song. The song already existed. So I put them on the song. We did a remix produced by Frenzy. Yeah. And then Frenzy. Frenzy. Was, oh my God. You people, God. That was a dude. That was a dude. Oh so it was off that Hugo wound that um, P Square had Frenzy mm-hmm. and got him to produce like three, four records off their their album yeah. that year. Um, I've, that's how I've always been, bro. I've always been open. I've always been. You so know, you're telling us. Yeah. When you were sitting on that couch in Akiode, rapping, Aipo, Aipo, go, bro. In a, that's gorge. Yes. I know that place, babe. You know it. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. So when you did, are you telling us at that place you had a 95 that you were My going office to? My was Ultima down the road. Yeah. Yeah, just down the road. Ultima Studio. In fact, I took permission to come out and just do something and that's when to shoot my video. My videos will come stop, on. My stop, video, stop, my videos stop, will stop, come on. Stop, my videos will come on on the MTN Top 10 at, it hit number one at some point. So, you know, who wants to be a millionaire and pray film they were MTN sponsored shows. Yeah, yeah. So they would just be there like the big boys. The, whenever they would visit, they'll be looking at the charts. They'll be like, they would look at the charts and they would look at me. Like, what are you doing? They'll, no, no, no. They'll be like, ah, person, they resemble person. Oh. <laughs> this guy just looks like that guy over there. That's one of those production guys. It can't be him though. This one is a totally different yeah. person. He's an artist. This yeah. one. And I'll smile. I'll keep quiet. Up until one of those days, um, I had on Sound City um, that was nominated for the SMVAs. Hmm. So that was, um, and guess who was coming to, to hand out the awards? It was, M- it was M- Nas Escobar. Esco! And, 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 and that was the one rapper that it, I wish you could see my walls in uni. It had I've, DMX, it had Nas, it had everybody pinups. Entire Nas catalog is yeah. in my head. So I looked at it, I'm like, ah uh-uh. ah. From Hugo Wound, a video that didn't even cost us up to 100,000 naira, thank, thanks to Clarence. Yeah. Clarence put it together in the most viral nature, but in the most believable nature. And boom. Yeah, boom. It just boom. blew up. And nice. the next, fast forward to me not even getting nice seats for the SMVAs and still coming from work to attend the SMVAs. You know, shout out to Bio Missionary yeah. that reached out and said, Ili, you need to come for this award. You know? There's a chance that you might win. I'm like, ha 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 ha. <laughs> Winners Chapel. <laughs> and I end up there and I'm sitting next to Baba Keke, Kenny Ogunwe, and he's like, well done, well done. You know, you're, you're nominated. Let's see how it goes. Boom. And the winner is You Go Wound. <laughs> Ill Bliss. That's how Nas pronounced it. You Go Wound. Ew. And I just, I just stopped hearing. I just, I'm like, me, Not little life. me, unknown me. When I came for that event, I did three interviews on the carpet. When I won, I did over 37 interviews just outside oh outside uh, Musan Center. It just made me understand the game in entirety. That's why nothing really moves me because I know it's fickle. I know it's, it's not... People just want to be with you because you, you're glossy. There you you're go. shining. So, there you go. Yeah, so from there, man, my career took off. <laughs> and just went all through the... Through 10 albums. I've, I have 10 albums. 10 I've, albums? Yes. 10 full length Damn. albums. Um, my last album, Ili Chapo X, came out May 29th. Right. You don't even know how I see you now, <laughs> This story that you told me. Like, I, like my dude, man, it's crazy. Yeah. You know I, I had to come through with some missing pages Shoot. for you. And also with yeah. the, uh, the Project Fame deal. You had a Project Fame. You had a deal with Project Fame, No, right? I had a deal because I was working at Ultima. Yeah. For, so, so the first season was in Yaya. Mm-hmm. I auditioned in Yaya in Calabar. So was it like you were like... Uh, I was a production manager. No, no, no. I was mm. the production manager. Mm. Were you like a, a stepmother to... Or the stepfather to everybody that won Project Fame? Because in a certain way, no, they but, had to come through. They no, had but, to... no, but because I knew them from audition stages. Okay. Because I knew um, Praise. Praise auditioned in Abuja, but he came mm-hmm. from Kaduna. Yeah. Project Fame won. Yeah. Um, Bis, um, Bisola. Bisola came yeah, Project Fame season one. Um, Inyanya won, of course. Mm-hmm. And then fast forward to Chidema's um, season. Um, and then fast forward to season five when Monica Oga won and you had Niniola. Niniola yeah. was fourth or fifth. Johnny Drill was like 11th. You understand? So like I've seen generations of them come. So they, they know me. I'm like big brother, big bro to them. Okay. Yeah, because 
I they they know that I am a musician, so mm-hmm. they see me and they're like, ah, oh, finally somebody that can speak our language. Yeah, you understand. So uh, that's why I've I've made music with Nini. I've made music with Praise. I mean, it's just, it's just a lot Chidema as well. Yeah, you know. So it was even in Project Film that I'm Evangelist Chidema. Evangelist Chidema. Hallelujah. G-O. <laughs> G-O. <laughs> That's my little girl. Well, she always been that way though. Like we she just the from, only war just made she, her do all those she things. She came from the Four Square yeah. Pente- Pentecostal choir. Yeah. That's how they introduced her to me when they handed her over. She every time she would do an interview, she'd say, ah, I'm going to church. Yes, I'm going every to do time. rehearsals. Yeah. I'm, That's why I'm not moved. Like, why are people putting trying to make it look like, like oh, oh she, she did she did some switch, some she's mm-hmm. always been walking it walking for God and yeah. singing in the church and yeah. you know. And it, it is what it is. Damn. All of those errors with Emily mean, Bola, her holding money, Miss Kelly K. Speaker. You that was, that was, that was, we were having the time of our you lives. Please, yes. you all put, you put Chidi Ma in a Rolls Royce. Yes. She yes. out here, like. That Rolls Royce was seven grand for two hours. Damn. And our entire production budget was nine grand. Clarence got depressed. He said, Why did we attempt this thing? We're not more hits. <laughs> <laughs> We don't have the budget. <laughs> we went to Shoo. we had to find that car. Oh my god, bro, it wasn't easy. Shoo. We had to find it, find found some styling around Elephant and Castle. Mm. You understand? Came back on set and shot, and it turned out right. You see, clans, clans f- um played such a pivotal role in my career, Chidema's career, Fino's mm. career, Suspect's career. So he put in a lot of himself. How special is that guy? too special no no class is too special. special we can't even quanti- can't even describe him as special class is class is alien I alien swear. where <laughs> too special you know so he always saw where we were going to yeah. always knew that my guys need to shine too we need to cheat the process we need to cheat the process mm-hmm. or got boss this you know he believed in archetypes so it's like like comics like a haze and he has laser beams, mm. can walk through walls, can do this, this. Yeah. Okay, boss can do that. You know, this person can do that. So yeah. he made us believe to a large extent. He made mm-hmm. us believe. So, so it's been, it's been great, man. It's been a great oh, journey. It's, See, it's, <laughs> now that you told me about the whole bank situation, I knew the bank work, but yeah. the, I didn't know the physics of it. Now you told me the physics oh, of yeah. it. Now, yeah. when I go home, guess what I'm going to go and listen to? <laughs> What? <laughs> you are on time. <laughs> ah, see, I'm counting my money so I can't hear you. Bro, I, now I believe that yes. song. Like, yeah. Now I know, okay, he, yeah. he knows what he's talking about. No, that's that was my life, bro. Dang. For years. That was my life. That was cold calls. I could walk into this building and say, hi, I'm looking for the MD. Mm. The gate man would be like, are you on appointment? Yes. We're here to open his account. Straight. And I'll just walk in. And I walk into here and I'm like, one inter, I start to introduce myself. This is my bank. Account opening forms. W- what are your credit facilities like? From where? Zenit? We can match it. We'll give you this interest rates. We'll give you that. We'll give you that. We'll... So that was, it made me a hustler. Yeah. So I could get on a bike from VI to our papa to see a prospect, not even a, a converted account. Mm-hmm. So when you see me in the business and I hustle, I still do everything. I still it's because at the back of my mind I still feel like I'm on that bike. Yeah. In that suit. Sometimes looking, sometimes under the rain. Looking for that dough. Looking for that dough. Damn. So that's that's bro. how that's how I look at it. <clears throat> um so for me, I think these things are just chapters in the big book. Yes, sir. So it leads you from from here, from growing up in the east to uni, to mm-hmm. coming to Lagos, to being a banker, to traveling out of the country to toil and come back and rebuild everything all over again mm-hmm. you know so i i feel like these things are the things that keep me grounded mm. they keep me grounded so there's no bullshit like it is what it is so when i'm telling an artist you're lazy i mean every freaking letter of that word lazy mm. when when i i reward an artist is because i know the artist is working really hard there you, go. you understand and i'm mm. still learning to be very honest bro there are so many things that didn't happen in my era mm-hmm. um that are happening now I still don't have a TikTok page. I don't have a TikTok <laughs> account too. My niece trying to make one for me, but I yeah. haven't put my energy, energy into, it, into yes. it. You know, so I look at it. I'm like, are you being realistic? Yeah. Are you? How are you going to survive in today's music? Just off the gram, off the Twitter. You know, so I'm making changes. I'm mm. learning every day. I just want to be the OG with a young heart. You just go. the OG that is very open and is always learning and, and putting out great records. Every crazy. single thing I see on record is that true. That is crazy. Every single thing, every line mm. is heartfelt. That's why 
my music is the way it is. It's not always in the clubs because sometimes it gets reflective. Yeah. So when it gets reflective, like um, there's a record I have called Country. It's social political and it's charged. It won lyricist on the roll at the head is this yeah, year yeah. in February. That's my Ted Headies plug. And I keep looking at it. I'm like, you've been here for so long. You're still winning. Mm-hmm. You know? So you know how it feels when you get your award and you just sit just behind Waze <laughs> and on Malay and you're looking at, damn, Liz- who's that guy? They say, oh, that's Zinoleski. Yeah, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so who's that guy? And you're like, man, it feels good to be around part again. of the conversation. There you go. Not just some there you go. done there and you dusted go. dude. Okay. No, we don't talk about everything apart from the movie career, Adogu Male. Because I know they probably did, they, whoever convinced you mm-hmm. to do it. Because from all the stories you've been giving us, yeah. somebody had to convince yeah. you. Yeah. So when you do this speed now, they literally yeah. had to beg you to come to come and win your SMB. <laughs> you know so I know with this movie thing, somebody had to put it in your body. Say, Two you, words. you guys do one. Two words. My wife. Kemi Adetiba. Kemi Adetiba, the great. Shout out to Kemi. Kemi is, Kemi is beyond awesome. Did you say no the first time? Oh, period. Straight you, up. You were like, nah. Stand on, on me. <laughs> I'm not doing. She's like, Eli, man, this will work. I swear it's going to work. Read the script. She sent the script to me. I didn't read it for four months or five months. In fact, I thought they had gone ahead to shoot the film. And I just called her randomly one day. She's like, your Shakara is too much. I, I don't know what else you want us to do, but we haven't found a replacement. And I read the script after then and saw it was such a dope story. And I said, okay, I'll I'll give it a shot. Mm. Um, Fast forward to the first time I got on set and Reminisce and I walked into a room and walked in to see Auntie Shola Shobawale doing a recital. Like, so she was in a conversation with like fighting with four different people. (laughs) You're like, Reminisce said, come. Baba, make we go outside. Like. <laughs> Baba, make we leave this film. Listen, <laughs> Baba, this no be right, bro. <laughs> you know how Rems is, is great. Rems is just so full of energy. He's, no, we were totally psyched down. Like, we we're like... No, at, at her talent. No, no, at the level, at the level of engagement. Like, where she was taking her emot- em- how emotions. How em- emotions level. on another... She was crying, she was screaming, she was punching the wall. Hey... I say, my Eli, <laughs> fuck off. Kemi, I'm not sure. Kemi said, no, 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 no. Eli, okay. Then Kemi started psyching me. <gasps> Eli, you know what? I'm dead. You need to own it. I'm dead. Malay is you. Malay yeah. is Oga Boss. So just give us Oga Boss. Just give us Oga Boss as a crime figure from the Southeast. Yeah. And we'll give you gear. We'll give you a range. We'll give you that. We'll give you that. You know, you are not Makanaki psychic. Mm. I repeat, you're a boss from another zone. Yeah. So just make sure it's not some lenient... Mm-hmm. And that Kemi eased both of us, myself, Rem, mm-hmm. you know, and shout Ma- out Na- to Makanaki her. is supposed to be the bad guy, but the real bad guy is the Dogumali. That's what they keep saying. People are still threatening me till tomorrow. Yeah. I got like four messages today. Four. I get five, four, ten sometimes, yeah. you know. You know, there's a, there's a whole generation of kids that will know Iblis as Odogumale. Absolutely. People think I'm an actor. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they, I, I that, said the same thing to Remini. It's like there's a whole generation of period. kids that think that you are. Yeah, an actor that's what you are. With all the show. records you think yeah. you've made, Rems has as much records as mm-hmm. I do in terms of albums. But yeah. kids come on, like, I, I see people that are like, oh, Baba, you fuck sh- up. Baba, I, sh- you f- I showed a picture of Fat Joe to my niece. Do you know what she said? Uh-uh. She's, oh, he's the guy from night school, the school with <laughs> Kevin Hart. In my mind, I'm like, so are you trying to tell me that with all the shouting of Terror Squad, no, Lean, lean back, back, everything? No, 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 no. You no, don't. Okay. How? She's like it's a, it's generational. <laughs> she's just like, it's ah, generational, bro. You can't you can't blame them sometimes. Bro, like, which is why you need to keep reinventing you how go. how you stay in the game and yeah. the things you do, the artistic endeavors. Yeah, you do. So we went on, made the film. It blew up. Oh wow! Mm. It blew up and created another trajectory for my career. Damn. You know. And then we went back last year during Ensas and shot the sequel. Mm. The sequel is. Oh, Jesus Christ. The sequel is totally, totally, totally on Crazy. steroids. It drops Damn. in the next month and a half. Kemi Adetiba, please do. Mm. Write a character. Somebody dreadlocks. Write you in. <laughs> Someone in dreadlocks that ah, maybe ah, Odogu ah, Malefi ah, just ah, send me a message. Ah, 
I'll go Waka, Johnson Kemp. I'll audition to be the Waka Pass. <laughs> you understand? I can switch my walking stance. Shout out to Kemi, man. Yo, Kem. Like I don't. Please, Kemi Aditi, if you are watching this, I DM'd you on your IG. Please reply. <laughs> create, create a role. Create yeah. a role. You know, I, I just. I'll I, put in a word. I'll I, put in a exactly, word for you. I just stand Kemi. She don't know. I just stand Kemi. You understand? She's so driven. So, Bruh, hard, so hard I had to go and do my own assignment about how when she was working with Sound City oh, as yeah. a presenter. Oh yeah. Bro, I was dying. When they were telling me stories of Kevin, I yeah, was dying. Yeah, yo. Yeah. But she a goddamn Kemi legend. Push, she man. pushes you, but she pushes you to be dope. Yeah. Pushes you to exceed your expectations. That's it. Shout man. out to her, man. That's she it. gave me a break and and look at it today. So more movies for you? Yeah, but sparingly though. Okay. Um, I'm careful. I'm picky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So after King of Boys, they tried to put me in that Odogu Malay box. The bad guy in the red suit mm-hmm. and the white hat that is Ibo. Mm-hmm. So I got a couple of I got a, num- a good number of scripts. And yeah, I kept, but I kept like turning it. them down. Nah, mm-hmm. nah. I'm not in a hurry. It will be epic or nothing. There because King of Boys, the standards are quite, it's really, really very high. high. So you go and you screw it up. Then, Cinema movies. Yes, then you mess it up. See Iblis out yeah. here being a sports actor. Because <laughs> <laughs> he started with the big cake. Yes. He's like, I won't give me small chips. Mm, yeah. no, I'll pass. No, 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 no. I want to eat the whole, the full cost meal, man. My bro, you deserve it, bro. You Thank deserve you. every single thing, bro. Thank you so Look, much. Look, this, literally, this conversation has changed my <laughs> mind, bro. My mind is out here I'm, blowing up. I'm glad it Like, has. everything you did... To, yeah. to be where you are right now. Yeah. Such an inspiration. Yeah. You know Thank what I mean? So Everybody much. watching, I hope you've learned something. You know what I mean? Because it's a it's like a clock. It oh, keeps yeah. going. Yeah. So you yourself, you got to keep going. Yeah. No matter the situation you find yourself in, no matter the country or the place you find yourself yeah. in. You, need you know to keep what I mean? Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Yeah. Keep going well. Okay, I asked Ubi this before he left. I just said it Ubi's name. Yeah. Right now, 2021. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Ogabos, mm-hmm. if you could talk to Toby mm-hmm. in, let's say, when you're in London, mm-hmm. what would you tell him? If you could pick a phone and call him like, hey, what's up, bro? Just believe more. Mm-hmm. There were times when I didn't even, I wasn't so sure about what I needed to do, what I wanted to be. Yeah. There was a time in my career because I was, I was struggling with um, accepting self for what i was mm-hmm. so i always kept looking at the big picture but something then would say no you're lane you're mm. freaking brt lane by your damn self mm. so stick to your lane but it's going to be hard though you're going to stick to that lane and it's going to you're going to work so hard until the results come so uh, sometimes i would lose steam i'll run back to paid employment and it, that never makes you rich you know so and it was from that paid employment I said, okay, let me start a management company. So yeah. I started going. Oh, let me partner with Clarence. Oh, I partner yes. with Clarence. So it was just me being restless. Mm-hmm. And eventually I did the 360 and I landed back to mm-hmm. Ogabos, Iobles, mm-hmm. there you go. the rapper. There you you go. understand? Which is the blessing God gave you. So exploited. Never be scared. I was scared. I was scared stiff. I was like, I came in here as a banker now. I had, I had money. I was sorted. So what? what is this thing? What is this having to rely on shows? I never understood how it felt like for you to wait until somebody calls you to do stuff. Yeah. So I decided I was going to take laws into my own hands, but I didn't know how. So it was still paid employment. Some days I'll flip my costume, go back to artist mode. Mm-hmm. So I was confusing people. Mm-hmm. Even when I started management companies, people were oh, he's a manager now. Oh, he's like Timberland now. He's just a kingmaker. You know, he signed Fino you know, to his management team, signed Chidema. He's not making music anymore. So people wrote you off. What do you mean? No, they did. You gave them an Amachikwano. Yeah, yeah. And Amachikwano was my comeback. Yeah. And that was Fino's intro. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah. Yeah, with the yeah. fake tattoos. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, who's this light skin boy with the fake tattoos? <laughs> you know what I mean? With the, yeah. Then he came and gave us Ghost Mode. And Ghost Mode. And then from there, I mean, I got a daily. I go. Yay. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. So, yeah, it's, man. it's just, um, when I see those things, uh, bro, if you don't understand how it feels Happiness. like. Happiness. When I look at these things, I'm like, ah. How we won coming yeah. from the southeast Enugu, yeah. Oh, for two, yeah. He uh, gave us a whole story about how he oh, yeah. you guys hooked up, did so many things oh, together. Fino, Fino was, he gave us a whole Fino, story, Fino bro. The man, very, very had a lot of tenacity, yeah. Man, he said, Boss, I'm not going back to the southeast until I make it confirmed. Yeah, there's nothing there for me anymore. I'm done. He stayed back shortly in between 
um, J Martin's studio in Omole mm-hmm. and and Capital Studio in yeah. Omole. And he said something mm-hmm. that that stuck with me. He said he was producing for people mm-hmm. and they were going and coming back as superstars. Oh yeah. So he was like, bro. If you know, I was making records for Bracket. I for, gotta, I, I have to go. YJ, I have Kamaya. to go. I have yeah. to go. He's like, no, to I gotta go. go. I gotta go. to go. Yeah. When he made an Amachi Kwana and he put the chorus and mm. he said, boss, if you don't like this, I don't know what else to do if you don't like this record again. What? Yeah. Sick record. He records. had produced so many records for me. I turned Sick them down. Sick record. I can't forget that session. Guess who the engineer for that session was? The person that recorded the vocals. Who? Douglas Agbo, a.k.a. Run Town. I was about to say Run Town. Douglas, yeah, my they, guy. Yeah, because they came together from the south. Yeah. So I'm a big yeah. Run Town stan. Yeah. Bro, Ron you can't is, say anything about Run Town on the internet. Ron, I'm coming from. Run is, is insanely what? creative. What? So you can imagine how I felt when we made See, I'm counting my money so I can't yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just like, I'm just winning with my guys, yeah. you know, and it just feels good, you know. I just want to be able to make music that's impactful and that's what I've been doing and it's been working. Mm-hmm. The fans have been, Jesus Christ, the fans have been super excellent, super patient, you know? And here we are. Here we are, man. I love it, man. <laughs> Shout out to you, man. Thank you. Oh, God, boss. Thank Shout you, out to you, you man. So, All right, so man. Much. So we got to wrap it up. Yeah. I appreciate you. Thank you We so definitely much. have to do this again. Thank you so Please much. Please holler at me anytime you... You want to come back? Yeah. Anytime you want to talk about anything, I'm here. Most definitely. And thank you so much. Your this, this conversations, these conversations are priceless. They're, yes, sir. They're capturing moments, a lot of lost moments in our culture. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so and much. And to the brands, I hope you're listening. This is a public service announcement from Oga Boss. Yes. Put money on that logo. Hey. Put money on this podcast. Tell man, them. And you get your money's worth. Tell big, them. Big ups. Big ups, my brother. <laughs> and just in case, I've been brushing up on my rap skills. So if you're bringing Toro Bread back, <laughs> I'm with you. You know what I'm saying? What? The bread, we're fathers now, man. <laughs> 